So I guess Piers Morgan wants to talk about vegan sex and his problem with that is that avocados exist. Okay, let's get into it. Baywatch star Pamela Anderson took to Twitter this weekend to claim that following a vegan diet makes you a better lover. Well, Pamela joins us now uh, live from <laughs> Vancouver. First of all, how are you, Pamela? I'm very good. Good morning. It's lovely to see you. You're looking as radiant as always. Um, I was struck by uh, a tweet you did, or a Twitter thread, actually, um, over the weekend, in which you were making this very bold assertion that vegans are better lovers, that having a vegan <laughs> diet is better for your sex life and sexual performance. Well, it is. It is. I mean, um, like it says right here, the cholesterol, the cholesterol hardens your arteries, but not much else. <laughs> I mean, can I ask what you base your claims on, though? Well, there's a lot of there's um, you know, there's a lot of research that went into this. I, I produced the film called Game Changers. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yes, we. And so there is truth to the claim that she's making here, and it is a little bit um, tongue in cheek to tie this to sex in order to get the talking point, in order to get attention. It's a very clever way to promote Game Changers and to promote the healthy benefits of a vegan diet and get attention for the cause. This is great activism. You know, if you want to flirt with Pamela Anderson, you're going to have to listen to her talk about veganism. Loved it on the programme. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So, and there's a I'm very memorable of description veganism. of what happens overnight for, for vegans. Yeah, more fun things happen even when you're sleeping. <laughs> I think you're on the verge of veganism. I think you're I'm a meat eater. I'm a meat eater, and I can assure you, fun things happen to us too. Do we? I, I just I can't believe we're, we're divulging all this information. Uh, I think yeah. it's a very important debate. But my, 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 my question is: Is your assertion that, that vegans genuinely have better sex lives than meat eaters? That's what I hear. I mean, that's <laughs> and that's. Um, I, you know, I'm vegan. I, I'm. I'm um, fairly confident in that statement, but... Um, How long have you been a vegan? Gosh, I guess a long time, 30 years. Wow. 30 and, years since I came to California. And your sex life has been better since you renounced meat? <laughs> yes, but I think even for... Yes, absolutely, I think. But I think I've always had a lot of fun in that department. <laughs> but it was, it's, I, I like to be... <laughs> <laughs> it's a good it's a good angle for me a spokesperson for me because I think it's it's a romantic way of eating it's like a, you know being engaged in the world and caring about um, caring about life and and the environment even is is a vegan lifestyle so this is kind of like another little perk okay but my is it okay. persuading so there's plenty of great theory to this actually I mean if you think about what makes a good lover then obviously there's a there's a physical element so blood flow being the main ingredient that she's alluding to here. There'll be stamina, endurance, flexibility, probably all other physical indicators, but undoubtedly a, a generous and compassionate lover is probably um, more likely to be the best one. I mean, you'd expect that a person who um, in their life is concerned about the well-being of others um, would be concerned about the pleasure of others, and therefore the sex life between vegans would probably be a bit more satisfying you to join up no, to here's January. A, my here's, prob my problem with it, I, I read a lot of medical experts. We'll bring in Hillary in a moment, but a lot of medical experts <laughs> say Hillary, that actually, did you know about this? actually a vegan diet is not that great for you and that actually missing really? out on meat can actually have a detrimental effect on your general health and well-being. But my point also, there's a hypocrisy. There's a hypocrisy about vegans, and it's this. <laughs> vegans love things like almond milk and almonds oh. and avocados and yet we all know that they are created in california uh, billions of bees get slaughtered in the making of almonds in particular and i never hear vegans standing up for the little guys for come the on. bees come on pamela why is a bee's <laughs> life less important, important to you than a cow's so for clarity where Piers says my problem is um this is not actually where his problem is. His problem is that he doesn't want to go vegan and so he needs to defend himself by attacking. Um, his problem is a problem that he has intentionally searched for. Sorry, he has tasked his team of researchers to search for a problem so that he can avoid answering to his own hypocrisy by slapping this 
custard pie into the face of every vegan who he drags onto this carousel of being talked at by Piers Morgan, like the sadist clown that he is. Piers couldn't pro possibly defend his own actions, so he combs the road to find a leaf and calls it a big concrete barricade he just can't possibly get over. And where he says, never stand up for the little guy, really Piers? Do you never hear vegans standing up for the little guy, or is that not literally all that they do? Yes, bees are just as important, and they're actually more important than humans. We can't have, we can't survive without bees, but bees, but so, the so world can survive without So do you, do you eat humans. almonds and avocado? At this point, I actually wonder what Piers means when he says his problem. Um, I don't know whether he's saying that this is a problem that invalidates the movement, um, because he feels that there's a point of hypocrisy, or is he honestly suggesting that vegans are ingenuine in their compassion, and his, his problem is that he doesn't believe that vegans care for other little guys? Or is this the problem that stops him going vegan, and if he could just get an answer to his question of, well, what about avocados, then he would stop eating cows' bodies? It's really, um, it's really infuriating for me to listen to someone like Piers challenge Pamela Anderson on the subject of integrity when the gurgle in his voice sounds to me like the dying echo of phones he's tapped or a literal web of lies knotting up his tonsils and strangling the life out of any honesty, allowing only his uncharitable, uncompromising bubbles of bullshit to spill out. Pamela Anderson's a class act, and a lifetime in front of the media has prepared her to handle the likes of Piers, which we'll hear how she responds now. I do, but I like to eat locally. I have actually have avocado trees on my property um, in California. I'm in Canada right now. But, so. but, but you know that billions of bees get killed in California every season in the making of almonds and avocado. And my point is, and then by the way, most of them <laughs> then get most of them get shipped around the world in on planes in in big containers, which is terrible for the environment. So my point is, if you're going to preach okay. about, if you're going to link veganism to the environment. How do you justify the slaughter of billions of bees and the way that almonds and avocado, the two preferred uh, foodstuffs for vegans, get, get shipped around the world? I think we hit a soft spot. <laughs> <laughs> what? But anyway, um, the, no, I think it's because you have to pick your battles. I mean, nothing is, it, you have to just live as gently as you possibly can. And I, I think that um, pick the, do what you do. I know there's there's no perfect vegan out there either, and there's no yeah. uh, perfect person. But I think adopting a, a vegan diet is really healthy for you, and and it's and it's great for the environment in so many different ways. I think when you're, you know, if people know it, go on to slaughterhouses and go on to meet people, less people would eat it. And I think there will be a time maybe we look back and, and realize that we can't even believe that we did eat meat at one point because okay, you talk okay, about refrigeration in. and you talk right. about transferring of you know of meat products and refrigeration and all the energy that goes let's into it. Dr. Dr Hillary um... so that there is the sound of Piers cutting Pamela off um, of course she handled that question the only way that you really can with Piers Morgan I think it's really clever so um, she's very cool and confident in handling interviews like this. Can't get a word in with Piers, so she very cleverly handles this the only way that you really can. Um, if you were to go on and on explaining your point of view in detail, which is what this kind of issue deserves, it's not a quick response um, to explain the situation that we're in with these. Piers would interrupt before she managed to get to a point and it would, he would get what he set out for, which is to put her on the spot, make her look foolish and undermine her position. What Pam Randerson does, as someone who's much more relaxed handling the media, is she steals a show with humour, breaks a flow in his conversation, takes a moment to bring it straight back to the point, which is the slaughter of animals for meat and for dairy, for animal products. There would be no point... Uh, if I was to give what my response to this would be, which I will in a moment, there'd be absolutely no point doing so directly in conversation with Piers because he wouldn't listen. In order to hear it, he, w he would have to listen. And Pam's style of handling this is the only way to get the point across before he gasses up again. But. If Piers wants to know so that he can stop asking this exact question to every vegan he meets, yes, vegans care about bees. That's why we completely keep off for honey and beeswax. When it comes to exploiting bees as pollinators, vegans don't love this fact of life. It's an uncomfortable reality. Vegans seek to avoid exploitation and violence towards animals and to move towards a world where such transgressions are abolished. We operate, however, in the same world 
where this is commonplace. This is normal practice. And the power that we have in this world is to use our voice and to use our choice. In the case of pollinator crops such as avocados, the avocado itself is not inherently exploitative, unlike meat and dairy. It's not necessary in order to produce an avocado, um, other than with the choices that are made about large-scale farming. It's not necessary to exploit bees uh, to be exploit bees to ship them around the world, in order to pollinate and create an avocado crop. It's just the practice that we do at the moment. And detail about practices on the farms that these crops originate from, or indeed details about the farm that these crops originate from, are not available to consumers. It's not information that's transparent. And it's not just an avocado problem, so it's not like vegans can just avoid eating avocados, eat another crop, because there's also a risk that it'll be the case with an alternative uh, fruit or vegetable as well. It may be the case for your strawberries, for example, or it may not be. Your strawberries might be completely nice and ethical and but without the transparent information you can't make a choice between strawberries that are created using exploited bees or strawberries that are just naturally grown uh, without those kind of practices being engaged in but you can guarantee that where that transparency existed vegans would make the most compassionate choice we make the most compassionate choices that we're empowered to make using the available information so if a new strawberry brand hit the shelves with labels such as ethically farmed or we don't import pollinators from all over the world, vegans would choose this over strawberries who keep the secrets of their origin. Pamela takes this exercising and influencing the world via her choices very seriously and due to her financial success she's able to live a life where she has much more control over her choices and invest in avocado trees on her property so that she can totally walk out of this part of the process that she, that she doesn't trust or know the origin of. That's great, but Piers completely ignores this and continue, continues to accuse her of hypocrisy anyway. reason for this is because he's not asking the question in good faith. He doesn't want to hear her answer, he just wants to tell a vegan that vegans are hypocrites. Because it's easier than actually for once in his life acknowledging his own hypocrisy. It's blatant. It's absolutely blatant, Piers. And the further you drag it on, the more you humiliate yourself. I mean, Pamela, you know, she's been a strident advocate for this for a long time. And she's a walking advert for the healthy results of a vegan diet. You can't dispute that. But is it, is it actually that healthy to just have a vegan diet? Now he passes the mic on to Hilary Jones because he's a doctor. And we aren't allowed to disagree with doctors, even if you're Pamela Anderson and worked on Game Changers, viewing the wealth of medical literature on this specific topic. It's a shame, really. I'd love if Pamela panned the camera over to her vegan doctor on the other side of the room, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Well, it can be, uh, but not necessarily. I mean, you could eat uh, chips all day and still have a vegan diet, but it wouldn't necessarily be healthy. So if you're yeah. um, educated and knowledgeable about veganism, of course you can have all the nutrients that you need, but it's very difficult um, as a vegan to get all the nutrients that you need in sufficient quantity. Uh, Dr. Hillary, and can you're I much ask more you... likely to have nutritional deficiency. Yeah, can I... So that's sort of true, but sort of misleading. It's not that hard at all, really. I mean, it's not harder than it is for meat eaters. If you want to eat healthily, you have to pay attention to what you're eating, whether you're vegan or not. And I'm a little concerned that meat eaters don't realise that they might need to consider and plan their nutrition in order to be healthy. You know, oh, don't go vegan. You might have to think about it. Oh, all right, I'll stick to eating cheese and fried chicken so that I know that I'll be healthy. Phew. Really doesn't work that way. You're not more likely to have a nutritional deficiency. That's... I mean, he's based that on nothing more than his warped chain of logic that he's followed live on air. <laughs> um, what's the point of saying that? I'll ask you specifically what, about what Pamela is saying about vegans making better lovers. <laughs> because her point is that the amount of cholesterol you eat if you're eating yep. meat products, dairy products and egg products means that the uh, blood flow around your body to significant parts of your body is restricted. <laughs> Yeah. And therefore, if you cut all of that cholesterol out from those sources, you, de facto, become someone with better blood flow and a better lover. Well, it's stretching a point to a great degree. There's no doubt that if you've got arteriosclerosis, if your arteries have become hardened by too much bad cholesterol, then you're more likely to suffer from heart disease and erectile dysfunction, hence the uh, worse lover, I suppose. But 
you can just you can have high cholesterol levels uh, even, even if you're a vegan if you're eating the wrong foods. Right. So I think that whilst it's likely that if you eat more vegetables and less um, uh, fatty red meat and the eggs thing is a complete myth. You can eat as many eggs as you like, won't raise your cholesterol. Uh, it's a very healthy part of a diet. And no, that's not true about eggs. Eggs contain cholesterol. They're not magic. They will raise your cholesterol if you consume them in a high number. I mean, that's dangerous advice. I, here you can really tell that Hillary's here for the money. You can't possibly believe that. You can't believe that that's a consensus. I mean, you might have a study that you could turn to to back him up, purpose design, like purposely build to prove his theory, but you'll have written off so many that disagree with him just to do so. But as far as too much red meat, um, then uh, th th there is the possibility that your, um, that your arteries could suffer... OK. All right. right. So it's not exclusive balance. to vegans. The jury's out. I did offer on Twitter to test this theory, Pamela, but I noticed you didn't respond mm. to no. my entreaty. Because that was really sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> and here we uh, reach the end of this portion of the conversation. Overall, I'd say Pamela Anderson is a pretty good vegan activist, actually. She's always coming up with new and inventive ways to put a spotlight on veganism and to get attention for the conversation. She brings the question back to where it's supposed to be, focusing on the animals, even against someone who's infamous for the way that he derails a conversation or tries to own the narrative with wild accusations such as Piers Morgan. And I really hope I don't have to listen to his voice again for a little while. Ugh.